Hello everyone! I made a working version of Among Us in Scratch. Well, as close as I could get using Scratch's limited tools. So, I started this project over a month ago, on a tiny laptop, on the other side of the world. And despite being in a foreign country on the other side of the world, I still knew the steps I needed to take to complete this project. Those steps being creating a movement system, making a map, adding gameplay to that map, and adding a fresh coat of paint to it. So, the first thing I focused on was making a movement system, and I actually had quite a cool idea on how I could get it to work. Have the player always in the centre of the screen, and have the map move around the player. And within 30 minutes I'd already got it working in Scratch. This code checks whether you're pressing down an arrow key, and if you are, it changes an X and Y variable. And then the map in the background's position is set to the X and Y variable. I also added these hitboxes that detect when you're touching the edge of the map. If you are, they stop you from moving in that direction. And with that, that was most of the movement system done. Now let's move on to creating the map. I wanted to have the scaled map from Among Us because it's the easiest map to work with in terms of shape. I tried importing a HD image of the map, but it didn't work, the image got highly distorted. This is because Scratch has two types of images, bitmaps and vectors. And the bitmap images, which are the default, can only be tiny. So I needed to find a way to turn the map into a vector image. And with a little bit of searching around, I found this Scratch thread that basically told me that I had to open the image in a vector program and save it as a .svg file. So I opened up the map in Google Drawings and converted it to a .svg file, which allowed me to have the HD image of the map in Scratch. But this map was pretty much only for looks, I wanted to create another version of the map that worked as a hitbox. So I went into Photoshop, created a new layer, and then traced a hitbox where players could walk over the original map. And once I had the hitbox fully traced, I imported it back into Scratch and I made sure it was the exact same size as the map. Then I made the map hitbox invisible, and I've got to say, it's starting to look really quite good. And with that, I had made the map. Now let's move on to the gameplay. Obviously this couldn't be a multiplayer game like Among Us, so I had to come up with a creative solution. So, in my head I came up with this. The player goes around doing all sorts of different tasks, and once they've completed all the different tasks, they hear the Among Us kill sound effect. Then they have to search around the map for a dead body. When they've got the dead body, they bring it to the button and win. I wanted to start off in Scratch by programming the different tasks. And I found out quickly that I could get the tasks to go to certain positions on the map by having them use the same XY variables as the map plus their XY positions. And I found sprites for the tasks by using the Among Us wiki. I imported those sprites into Scratch and made sure they lined up exactly where they would be on the map. Then I created another hitbox that detects when you're touching one of these tasks, and made it so when you are touching one of these tasks, the use button appears. And when you press this use button, the task begins. And you might be wondering what tasks I've picked to be in the game. Well, here are all of them on screen now. Basically, when you get close to one of these tasks, the use button pops up, and when you press the use button, the player is frozen in place, a minigame pops up that you have to complete, and once you beat that minigame, the task counter goes up by one. And I'm not gonna go into the code of any of these tasks, it's complete spaghetti code. It's so bad, Oh. Anyway, beside my code being atrocious, I decided to open up Photoshop and make it so all the tasks you haven't completed glow. And with that, that was the tasks done. It only took around 20 hours. Now finally, let's add some crewmates. This was pretty simple. All I did was make them stand in random places on the map using the same method I did for the tasks. And then once you completed all eight tasks, one of the crewmates gets killed randomly. Then I made it so that you could pick up the dead body using the same hitbox that checks for tasks. And then made it so if you bring this dead body to a button, this victory screen plays. And that was it, the gameplay done. Now let's have a look at the final finishing touches. The Scratch Cat looked a little bit stiff, so I yunked this running animation from Griff Patch and put it in my game. I'm pretty happy with this. I've made it in like a few minutes, this is going to be the thumbnail for the game. Then finally, I added some sound effects of a YouTube video I found. And that was it, the game done, it only took me around 50 hours. I know it doesn't look like much, but it takes an enormous amount of time to make games like these. If this video hits 40k likes, I'll return the I Made series to the channel. So, this is my Among Us game, I'm sorry that I haven't done any face cam videos in a while. I've been moving my setup around, so I'm in a brand new room now, I've got it all set up. But anyway, let's check out my Among Us game, it's all done now. I've spent around a month on this game, so it's been a long time in the making. 
I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of how it turned out because I've done a load of things that I didn't know were possible in Scratch. Anyway, without further ado, here it is. So you start off in the cafeteria and you use your arrow keys to control. So you see I'm controlling the Scratch Cat right now by using the arrow keys. Here's the Among Us guy. Hello. But let's go around and do my tasks. I haven't shown off all the tasks yet, I don't think. So here's the Asteroid task. You press E on your keyboard to activate the task like in Among Us. So with the Asteroid task, I, I want to click on them using my mouse pointer. Click on all the asteroids, and then I have to destroy 15 to move on. There we go. Task complete. Nice. And now that I've beaten the asteroid task, I can move down here and go to O2 task. I think that's what it's called. Go to the O2 task. I can't really, really remember. I actually haven't played Among Us in ages. It's a bit of a dead game, but I thought it would be fun to make it in Scratch because I did promise it a while ago. And I think I've done a pretty good job. I've done a lot of things that I didn't even know were possible. Next, I can go to the chart task where I just want to click on this guy using my mouse like this pretty easy task complete but i thought it'd be impossible to have a map like this which you move around i thought the map would have to be cut out in a grid similar to the original zelda game but i was able to make it so that you could walk around the whole map quite fluently anyway let's go do the shields task i just want to click on all the red ones until they're all white and once they're all white it's done and now we can go down to the admin room. This originally was going to be a Friday night Funkin' task, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it, so I've just done a repeat of the shield task. You see there's a Friday night Funkin' arrow on the computer, and there's also the Friday night Funkin' microphone there. There are no tasks in admin, there's just a green crewmate. We'll see them in a second. The ending involves the crewmate, but I can go into the back of electrical. Blue's there looking kind of sus. I don't want to be alone with him, but we can do the task here. It's another O2 task because I couldn't figure out a way to do the wires. But with this O2 task, you just want to drag the leaves to a certain point. You click and drag, and then you bring them to a certain point, and it flashes green. It's pretty simple. I'm proud of this one. I'm, I like the way this one looks. Let's make my way to Simon Says. I think Simon Says and then Medbay are the two tasks left. And I can use this task. This one makes the noises. So you just want to copy what it does. There we go. This one took a while because it doesn't actually have any buttons. It detects where your mouse is on the screen. And if it's in a certain range where the button is, it allows you to input it. So it's basically checking where you press the mouse down, which is quite cool. <laughs> there's a red guy up here. No, this is there's an orange guy. Yeah, he's the same color as my hoodie. Nice. But now let's go to med bay. I can go in for a scan. Something doesn't look right here. The scratch cat isn't meant to be on the back like this. Task complete. Nice. Did you hear that? Someone just got killed. So, basically for the ending, I wanted to include the crewmates in some way, but one of the crewmates gets killed. It's random who it is each time, so you want to make your way and check on all the crewmates, and one of them will be dead. We, we want to check on green? Oh, it is green. I saw that. Green is dead. So when you get close, a report button pops up in the corner, and when you press E... You actually pick up the dead body and it tells you to bring it to the button. Which I thought was a cool way to end it. You want to bring it to the button. And then you win. And then it gives you a time in seconds in case you want to speedrun it. And if you do want to speedrun it, I'm hosting a speedrun competition on this game. And whoever gets the fastest time wins $50. A link to the Scratch game will be in the description in case you want to play it or check out the code. Anyway, follow me on Scratch. Subscribe to me on YouTube.